Hello and welcome to part 8 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video I'll be showing you what's called the Subdivision Surface or Subsurf modifier which allow you to take models that you create in Blender, especially things like characters or smooth organic shapes, and make them look very professional and smooth in one easy step. There are actually several ways to make objects look smooth in Blender, and the easiest way is to just click on this smooth button. I'm not going to do that with this cube though, I'm going to delete it and I'm going to add a UV sphere because a UV sphere has lots of faces. In fact, it has 32 times 16 faces, which is over a thousand, to create the shape using that many faces so it's nice and smooth, but you can still see all the individual polygons or faces because it's in what's called flat shading view. And in flat shading view, all of the faces are shaded or basically colored or shaded in terms of the light source and where the shadows are independently between each individual face. If I click on smooth though, what it's doing is it's blending that shade from one face to the next across your entire 3D mesh. If I go back into flat view, what you can see here is that when we click on smooth, the shade of this face and the shade of this face will get blended from one to the next from the middle of one to the middle of the next one, but up and down and side to side all at the same time. So that's what shading smooth versus shading flat does. Shading does not actually make a higher resolution mesh or a more detailed mesh. All it's doing is changing the shading, the way it draws on the screen and when you render out. Um, but it, when you look at the object from, let's say a profile or the side, you can still see the original jaggy edge of the polygons. That's what the uh, Subdivision Surface modifier does. It actually makes your object, in reality, more smooth. I want to mention, though, that we would never use smooth on an object that has edges. In other words, I'm going to go ahead and delete this UV sphere, and we're going to add a cylinder, because a cylinder has smooth parts and it has edges as well. The edges are, of course, are around the top and bottom, of the, and I'm going to call it a soup can, because a soup can, of course, has a middle top and a middle bottom, but it has a smooth paper plastic or paper label around the outside, and that label does not have these uh, faces on it. So what you would need to do in this case is go into edit mode, select all of the faces around the whole label of a soup can, and again, I did that by holding control and alt and right clicking on one of these edges, and that will select the entire ring of faces, same thing with edges, you hold alt and control for that. Um, so there we go, and then you would click on the smooth button, but the smooth button has moved because we're in edit mode right now. The smooth button is now under shading and UVs, and that's why I'm not a big fan of these tabs that have come out in the last few versions of Blender. Um, it creates more searching time. So. Face is smooth, there we go, and I go back into object mode, you can see that now the soup can label is smooth, but there is an edge from the top to the side and from the bottom to the side. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and delete my uh, cylinder though, and I'm going to add that original cube back, and we're going to add the subsurf modifier to it. To add a modifier, of course, you have the mesh selected, and you go to the wrench tab and you click on add modifier and there is the subdivision surface modifier. When I add it, it's gonna drastically change the cube. And what you can see, hopefully, and I'm gonna hide the modifier's effect with the eye and show it, and hide it, and show it. What it's doing is it's basically cutting every face into four, in other words, in two directions. Um, and it's smoothing out the middle of one face over across the mesh to the middle of the next face. So this point, basically would have been where the middle of that original top face was and that point there would have been the middle of the side face but it's subdividing up and then taking that those new edges in between or the original edges of the cube and it's pulling them in a little bit to make the mesh look more smooth. Now this is only displaying one iteration of the subdivisions or the, the subdivision surface modifier and that's because it has options right here. The subdivisions you can turn up and down as you wish as long as you have not clicked apply on the modifier. So if I turn view up to two, each one of those now faces that got turned to four got divided into four. So each original face is now, you know, 
Each one is divided by four and again divided by four, so each face is now 16, and it's smoothing it even more. If I keep going, you can see the object looks more and more smooth, but I'll warn you, don't turn these up too high. That might cause your computer to slow down or even crash your computer or maybe just Blender. So keep that in mind, please. Now there are two ways you can subdivide. When you render out a scene, in other words, you draw out the frame with its proper lighting, it will look how it does with the display number of iterations. So that's how it looks like right now. And I'll press escape to go out of my render. And then it's, it's displayed like that because we only had two subdivisions. If I turn this down to zero, even though I see it round in my display with three subdivisions, when I render out my scene, it still looks like the original cube. So keep that in mind, please. But what this allows you to do is not see your mesh so complicated in your scene so that it does not slow down things like orbiting and working in Blender or crashing your computer, but you can turn render up very high. So right now I'm looking at my scene with only 16 faces per original face with two subdivisions, but when I render out the scene from the render tab, it looks much smoother than that. Now of course you can still see the individual faces and that's because we are in flat mode. If I go into smooth mode, Again, it smooths out the mesh, and when I'm rendering out, it now looks like basically a sphere. The powerful thing, though, about the subsurf modifier is that you can still work on your original mesh in edit mode. So if I go ahead and press tab in edit mode, you can see I can still access my original faces, and I can still model exactly as I would before. If I want to subdivide this up, I'll select everything, press W, click on subdivide, and I can keep working with it. Now you'll notice that because I subdivided my cube up, it became looking more like a cube. And the reason why that happened, and I'm gonna actually go back a couple of steps, is because when you have two edges that are close to one another, it forces a harder edge. So I'm gonna use a, make a loop cut here, and I'm gonna click in the middle, and you'll see that right away, it turned my basically sphere into more of a pill shape. And that's because, again, it's moving from the middle of one face to the next. And between these two faces, it's not going to make a rounded edge between them. So this takes some practice to get used to, getting used to how modeling will affect how something is round. But you'll notice that if I put two edges very close to one another, in other words, right there, you basically get a totally hard edge, at least, uh, at least mostly. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind. I'm going to flip over now to my uh, bunny head from one of my previous videos. Uh, right there. So that's what we got to at the end of video number six. We create a bunny head without the mirror modifier. And if I wanted to use the mirror modifier, what I could do is go to my front view and go into edit mode and turn on see through mode. And I would delete all the vertices on one half of the mesh. So I'm going to select all of that. In fact, I'll do the other side. Okay, so I've selected all that half, and I'll delete that, uh, all those vertices. I'll go ahead and add the modifier uh, mirror and click on clipping, so it does not cause me any issues at the mirror point. And what I can do after this is add the subdivision surface modifier, and this is where our modifier stack comes in. The first modifier modifier I added was the mirror modifier and the next one I added was the subsurf modifier, and therefore they added those two things, or those two things came into effect in that order. The original mesh looks like that, and the first thing it does is it adds the mirror modifier, and the second thing, after there are now two halves, is it then smooths out both halves. You can reorder modifiers up and down, so now the subsurf happened first, it smoothed out one half, and then duplicated and flipped it, and in the other case, it mirrored it and then subsurfed it. When you're using subsurf, I would suggest that should be the last step. You should mirror before you subsurf so they are in that order. What you would never want to do with the subsurf modifier is apply it. Because if you apply the subsurf modifier and go back into edit mode, you now have all those faces for real to work with, which makes it very you know, difficult to work with that small of a face. And I didn't even have it that detail. If I go back and turn this up to, let's say, 5, and now I apply this, Blender might take a while, it might even crash, 
But now if I go into edit mode, there is only one half, but you can see my computer is responding slowly, and I have a very, very dense mesh to work with. In fact, it's so dense that I can't even see the individual faces anymore, and I think I'm going to crash my computer. So I'm going <laughs> to try to undo that. Just don't ever apply it. You can make a movie and still have characters with the subsurf modifier on it. You never have to click apply. If my computer responds again, that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.